OK, that's the interval of a major third covered. So let's move on and look at the next interval within our C major triad. The interval between the notes of C and G. In music, we call this interval a fifth, and sometimes it's also referred to as a perfect fifth. This is because, as we'll discover in the future, there are some instances where the fifth of a triad changes depending on the chord. Anyway, for now though, let's just look at where these two notes are located on the fingerboard of the bass. OK, here's our root note of C again, and we'll always find a fifth, one string up, and two frets higher than the root note. Just take a look again at the shape we're creating on the fingerboard and learn to associate this with the interval of a fifth. Remember, this shape will always give us the interval of a fifth no matter where we choose to play it. Another useful tool, especially with the fifth, is being able to find this particular note lower than our original root note. So, from our C, we can find a low fifth on the same fret as the C, but one string down. When playing between the root note and a low fifth, we can easily create bass lines with either a country or reggae feel. By now, you're hopefully already aware of another really important interval that we've been using so far. It's the interval of an octave. We've already learned that the distance of 12 frets up the neck gives us an octave, but the interval of an octave can also be found from any note, two strings up and two frets higher, just like this. Even if we choose to just use the root note of a chord, in this case C, to create a bass line, never be afraid of using an octave to add interest using rhythms. Or playing both octave notes together to add weight to maybe a chorus or the end of a song. We can also use the interval of an octave to great effect and apply it to the other intervals in our major triad. We've already seen this with the fifth, but also try experimenting with playing the major third an octave lower, so that this time it's below the root note. Even though a major triad is just three notes, by varying where we choose to play these notes, either up or down the octave, can open up a lot of musical possibilities, and in turn give us more ideas for outlining the sound of a major chord. In this case, C major. In order for you to practice and create some ideas of your own, I've looped this C major groove at the end of this session. I believe that the more we can learn and understand about chords, and of course scales, the more options we have to choose from. It's far better to have more ways of outlining a C major chord than just the one way. This kind of approach makes the things we play sound fresh and exciting to the listener, and of course keeps us busy. The late great Jaco Pistorius used to say, think fast, don't play fast. And the more you embrace this statement and make it a part of your playing, the quicker you'll improve and develop new ideas. Keep practicing and I'll see you next time.